Uh, we've been making some food parcels for the kids in our um, local community. Um, we've been every, we've got lots and lots of volunteers and the church have been helping us as well. Uh, we get our food from Fair Share and we've given out over 400 food packs to local people in our community. We also, through guidance and through my family link worker, have been um, providing wellbeing packs. It's just a little bag that they've been taken out with little crafty resources, little presents, just so the kids can see that the school is still around and the guidance staff are still there for them. So we've had regular contact with a lot of our pupils over the last three months, keeping up in touch with them all. So all my learning has come through teams. Um, the interaction that we've had with the teachers would be them putting it up and then me hand it in and getting good feedback. That'd be the most interaction I get from them. There wouldn't be uh, calls and stuff to like help me out if I was struggling. So if I was struggling, I'd email them or something like that and they would talk to me. But what I've been doing learning would be just going to my mum and dad, seeing what they would think about it and then handing it in later. But interaction would just be the feedback that I get. The best part of home learning is being able to stay in my bed for as long as I want and the worst part is probably not being able to see my friends. So part of what we've done to make sure that all of our young people are accessing the learning while they're at home has been to research what devices are available at home, if there's any problems or issues in terms of Wi-Fi access, or to try and reassure parents if they're working from home and they're perhaps using the only laptop that's available or there's several siblings in the house. We've tried to make sure that we are providing access to laptops or to devices and Wi-Fi access to help make sure that all of our young people can get online and can access their Glow teams. Part of what we've done has been a blended learning approach where a lot of our staff have been filming themselves, um, teaching the young people. There's been online art lessons, there's been Bitchmoji classrooms, and there's been YouTube channels from the P department, from maths department and sciences. And it means that although our young people are really missing the face-to-face -face engagement with teachers, they're still getting a blended approach. So in schools, we are very excited about welcoming our pupils back in August. Our staff have been doing lots of work to prepare for this. We have been looking really carefully about the makeup of our classrooms and how things are organised to make sure things are clean and accessible for pupils to use. We've also been working really hard to have discussions about transition for pupils who are moving into a new classroom with a new teacher. It's really important for us when pupils come back to school that they feel comfortable with their new teacher and that their new teacher knows a wee bit about them before they even walk through the door. So there's lots of work at the moment going on with class teachers and support staff to make sure lots of good information has been shared about pupils prior to them returning to school. Over the last few months, myself and some of my colleagues, both class teachers and support staff, have engaged in a lot of conversations about the children that we are about to receive um, into our new classes after the summer, just so we've got the best understanding about their needs um, and just so we can kind of get to know them a wee bit better. So when they come back in August, it's a really welcoming environment and we feel like we know them. And we've also sent them transition videos of ourselves, so um, they've kind of got to know their new teachers a wee bit more as well. Um, as a class teacher, I've also been in the children activity centres uh, so it's been really nice to see children and see how they've kind of coped in this environment and I think it's important for children to know if they haven't been in these the, the children that we've worked with the last few months have coped really well and actually it'll be it'll be totally fine when our pupils come back after August if they are feeling a wee bit anxious actually we've seen it ourselves that children will hopefully be able to cope in this kind of unusual environment that we see ourselves in. Yeah well certainly life at school has not stopped over the last few months um, Initially, we were working with a lot of our young people in the support base, so making sure they're okay, looking after their mental health, setting um, some work for them, just making sure that they were, they're on teams and were able to access the work more than anything. Over the last few weeks, we've been working on transitions, so getting the primary school up to the high school. So we've had um, an online transition where we've been using Sway to do tours of the school. We've been asked, um, answering frequently asked questions on Sway. We've also done lots of team meetings with teachers and with individual pupils. Um, staff have been meeting each other from the school and with other schools just to make sure that transition is quite smooth. And then we've actually all been in school recently for the enhanced transition for pupils coming up to the high school. 
I think parents and children will probably see different things from, from the get-go when they're coming into school because we'll be encouraging parents not to come into the playground. We'll be trying to make sure that people are thinking about how they walk, how they cycle, how they scoot, um, how they find different ways to get to school so that they're not all at the school gate maybe as they've been in the past. So I suppose that's the first thing that people will see that will be a bit different. So when our children return to school in August, they may see one or two things that are a little bit different to what they're used to. So an example of that would be at breaks and lunch times. It's likely that we will have staggered breaks. And this is to help make sure that in the playground, children have plenty of space to run around and play and have fun with their friends. It also may be the case that in the morning and at the end of the day, we look at um, some staggered starts and ent ends to the school and this is so that again we can control the numbers of pupils arriving at any one time. Children will still receive their core learning hours that won't be affected in any way and we will work really carefully and closely with parents to make sure that everyone has good information about this prior to the school starting in August. So in secondary schools, they might be seeing a bit of a difference with the buses. Um, it's quite complex, all of the buses that we have that go all over Fife and they're used for other routes other than just the, the school transport. So it might be that we need to think about slightly different timings or different ways of getting the children into the school from the bus. So we'll certainly be working on that over the summer holiday period to make sure that the buses are safe places for children um, to be able to access their school if that's the way they come to school. Um, we've been building the resilience resources into the curriculum, so we've done quite a few different activities that we'll bring in with the kids with the first couple of weeks, talking about things that they've enjoyed in lockdown, maybe talking about things that they didn't really enjoy as much and trying to work through that just to try and see if there's any anxieties there for the pupils. Um, so we'll be doing that the first couple of weeks when the pupils return. Um, it's been quite hard at home uh, because obviously your teacher's not there to help and I don't really want my mum and dad helping me because it can be quite annoying. So I'm kind of excited going back to school so I can actually learn new stuff and not just keep revising. I think in this time that we've been in, everybody's a bit anxious. There's nobody, I don't think, um, in Fife that I've seen and probably across Scotland that isn't anxious. So, so if children are anxious, we need to listen to them. We need to reassure them that it's OK to come back to school. Um, life will be a bit different, but actually it'll be OK. They'll be able to see their friends, they'll be able to do lots of things that they've done in the past. And this new normal for them will soon become the normal. I think if we're thinking about over the holidays and how children and families need to prepare for coming back, the biggest message that we would, we would be giving as a school is that our pupils and families have worked really hard over the last term. And what people need to do now is have some family time. They need to relax, they need to enjoy each other's company, get out in the fresh air and enjoy being children in the summer holidays because that's what this is going to be. Um, it's not a time for worrying about where your children are in their learning. That's our job to look at that when they come back in August and make really good assessments and judgments about their learning and help to move pupils forward. But in the meantime, children need to stay safe, have lots of fun and relax. Um, and just get yourself ready by looking at what you've done before and just getting yourself back into mindset to come back to work. Nothing's really going to change a whole lot, I don't think. My advice for the kids and for their families would be to just get out and about. You're like the, the lockdown's easing now, so you've got a little bit of less restrictions, so you could maybe go and see some friends. Um, just take it easy over the summer holidays, just get a real chill. And then probably around mid-August, I'd be trying to get my sleeping pattern back um, to some kind of normality, ready for that day when you come back. Um, I'd also be going and getting a haircut. The one piece of advice that I would give children and families to kind of think about over the summer holidays is just to kind of relax and recharge. This has been such an unusual situation that we've all kind of been in and they've overcome that greatly. They've worked really, really hard, um, which probably has been quite tiring for them being in a new environment at home learning. So I would say just relax, enjoy yourself, play with your friends, do whatever you kind of can just to make yourself feel a wee bit more kind of normal. And when we return in August, I feel like they'll be a lot more kind of settled for coming back to school. I've said to many parents when I've been talking to them that staff are most excited about having all of our pupils back. 
as a teacher in a school, the one thing you don't want um, are sessions where children can't all be together and all be learning together and having fun. So we are really looking forward to opening our doors on the first day back and bringing our pupils back to the place where they love to learn, where they can meet friends and where they can be at their happiest. So we cannot wait until August. Um, not having the kids in the school, it's quiet, it's empty, we can't see them, we can't be there to help them. Uh, I'm a nurture teacher at Glenrothes High School and it involves a lot of cuddling and a lot of just being there for the kids, just talking um, and just seeing them every day, giving them something nice to eat, uh, a little snack, we do breakfast clubs. So just seeing that some of the kids might not be getting that provision, um, I find it really hard. Um, I miss the kids giggling and laughing and I miss the banter with the kids, so I'm looking forward to that in August. The thing I'm most looking forward to is being able to see my friends and see the teachers. It's going to be great to be able to go and visit schools. Um, I'm out visiting here today where the Children's Activity Centre is, but it's not got the same numbers of children uh, that we'd normally have. So I'm really looking forward to seeing our children, seeing all those smiling faces um, in our schools where they're learning and I can go and actually experience that with them. I'm looking forward to going back to school to see all my friends and I really miss the school because we've been at home way too long. So I am looking forward to seeing children in our schools when we come back in August. I feel like as a teacher there's nothing better than watching children learn and achieve something new right in front of you which we haven't been able to have over the last few months. Um, so I cannot wait just have that buzz back in the classroom and just have a nice full classroom with all of the children and watching them learn and achieve things that, that are brand new to them. So I'm just really looking forward to seeing their faces in front of me. We pride ourselves on the very positive and bonded relationships that we have with all of our young people and our families and staff. And it's very strange coming into a school when there's few people around. So we can't wait to have all the young people back learning face to face, getting to know their new teachers and getting back to their learning. Hopefully that's helped you to see a little bit about what's going on in our schools and how we've been preparing for our children and young people coming back. The one thing that is really important I want to reinforce here is that the safety and the well-being of our children and young people is absolutely paramount. We want to make sure that we've got an environment that is right for everybody and safe for everybody, for staff, for children, for young people to come back to school. So we'll be working hard over the summer to make sure that that is the case um, and we'll be making sure that we communicate with you, particularly in the last week of the holidays, so you'll have lots of information to look out for. Um, we'll try and give you a bit of time to have a rest over the holidays, but then in that last week, if you could look out for further information when we'll have the new guidance and we'll know exactly what we're able to tell you about what children and young people can and can't do on their return to school. So have a good holiday and we we'll look forward to seeing you all in the new term.